Hey everyone, Joe Bowen, the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs here, inviting you to join a very special podcast, 30 Minutes Live with CDP. It's every Wednesday and Friday night on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. Hey everybody, how you doing? It's uh, your boy CDP here. 30 Minutes Live with CDP and uh, it's Friday, March 5th at uh, 2.24. I'm a little bit early today, uh, but I just wanted to, uh, like I said, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, today I have, uh, oh, Lisa Drews here. One second, Lisa, and I will get you on here. Just one second. Uh, let's see. There's There she is, Lisa. Uh, from 570 News in Kitchener. She's kind enough to join us. Uh, I'll have her on just one second. Hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Lisa. Um, I have to do one full disclosure right off the top. I am now at home out of the studio, and I'm on a farm property with a really windy situation outside, so I'm hoping my internet's good. And I also have a son getting picked up, and I have a very large, uh, loud farm dog. So I'm just going to apologize ahead of time if all of a sudden you hear a loud, you know, a lot of barking going on. So I'll do my best to mute, or you can mute me. Um, but just a heads up, there could be a big uh, farm dog situation at some point. <laughs> okay, no no worries, no worries. I, like I said, uh, I appreciate you coming on and stuff like that. So thanks for the heads up. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Happy Friday. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I, I was thinking today and I, I can't believe it's already March 5th. It's uh, days away now from one full year of as life we now know under a pandemic. And it's hard to believe that we're still talking about the pandemic and we're still referencing it. But the hope is on the way with now these COVID uh, vaccination clinics opening up. So there's a lot of uh, good news on the way. And I think people are just breathing a little bit deeper, but we're still being super cautious. Yeah, we've had enough uh, bad news the last year or so. Um, I still think it's going to be a little bit longer to go through all this with the vaccinations and all that. So I think it's still going to be a while yet. Yeah, well, you know, fingers crossed there was some uh, better news announced today that our COVID vaccinations are moving up in age now. There was an announcement this afternoon. So, uh, you know, Hopefully that we'll all get it before uh, they're now sounding, they're moving the late summer up to maybe midsummer now that we'll all get that shot in the arm. So hang in there. But yeah, one year is really close. Yeah, at least it, uh, yeah, we've had enough bad news. So uh, it's nice to actually get positive news for once. But I was going to say there's some uh, sad news today for uh, uh, Walter Gretzky passing away today at age, I think, 82, I believe he was. That's right. And, you know, Chris, and I, obviously I'm not a sports expert. I'm on your show talking probably more about news. But I think we can all say as uh, hockey moms and dads and, and any kid that's picked up a stick and played on the street, we can all – uh, have a strong feeling and a strong love for for Walter Gretzky, what he's brought to the game of hockey, what he's brought to Wayne Gretzky. But I mean, my kids have both experienced some really what they felt was one-on-one -on -one time with Walter Gretzky over the years. We've played at the Walter Gretzky, you know, street tournament in Brantford. He's shown up at, at hockey tournaments in Cambridge over the years. And uh, Glenn and I am seeing have had so many opportunities to be with him as a special guest or even someone at our table and to, you know, to talk to Walter Gretzky. And he always makes you feel like you're the only one in the room. He has time for you. He, you know, I've heard so many stories today. People are reaching out on Twitter when we shared the news that their kids were exposed to him as well. And, you know, he showed up at different events like Kids Ability when we had our radio thons. And he stayed hours and hours to make sure that he checked in with everybody who waited in line to just to say hi to Walter Gretzky and sign. He would sign anything, you know, he was just lovely. Yes, I had the pleasure of meeting him once in the 80s and a uh, really nice down to earth guy. And uh, Mike Stubbs uh, tweeted today on Twitter, uh, Mike Stubbs, who's uh, the radio voice of the London Knights and on uh, 980 News tweeted that uh, the world needs more people like uh, Walter Gretzky. Yeah, we have uh, we have so many great stories. We've had a number of reporters over the years uh, go live down in Brantford, either in front of uh, Walter Gretzky's house, because he was still living in the original Gretzky home, um, to, I believe it was Wayne Gretzky's either 50th birthday or it just marked some big anniversary of his hockey career. We sent our reporter down. I'm pretty sure it was Mark Douglas 
who's been tweeting some of his memories today. Walter was on the phone. He opened up the door, let our reporter in while he was doing another interview. And I think he was in his boxer shorts. And he had our reporter stay with him all morning. He did live hits with us all morning on our morning show. And, you know, there's Wayne Gretzky's dad just inviting our reporter in, hanging out with him all morning, showing him pictures you know, on the fireplace mantle of, of Wayne and the rest of his children and his family. And he was so lovely. Like just, he was just so approachable and so part of Brantford, you know, he was just so, mm -hmm. he just felt like we all, we all knew him. He was part of our family. Yes. And then uh, one of my uh, football guys, I like Chris Schultz from TSN uh, passed away today at the age of 60, I guess yesterday, pardon me, that, yeah. a heart attack at 61. And it's like, that's much too young. Much too yeah. young, but sorry, so sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. And there's so. dog barking. That's okay. I like dogs. That's fine. No Can worries. My hang out for a sec. What's your dog's name? Uh, we have two. We have Cooper and Chloe. Um, I also have three rescue sheep. I have four goats, seven ducks, and uh, one teenager currently in the house. So How are you? You're there's a lot of activity going on. Between your job and between home, you're very busy. So I really appreciate you even coming on today. I, I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you so much. Um, I was just going to start with some questions, if that's okay. Sure, I'll do my best. And again, okay. I've been up since two thirty in the morning, so uh, okay. I'll, I'll try to get them right for you. Okay. Like I said, I already have more ready to go. I produce my show uh, at my other job when I have downtime. So I like to be prepared uh, before I have guests come on. Okay. Go so, ahead. Okay. The first question I was going to ask you, Lisa, is tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I have been at 570 News for over 30 years now, and I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm thrilled wow. to say that, but uh, I'm still hanging out with the same great employer, uh, I started way back in uh, 1990 as a weekend reporter and also covering um, the news on the weekend as an anchor, covered council meetings and the police beat, and uh, then became a part of the Chime Morning Show. And at the point, it was a country music morning show on 570 and 570 Chime, which was AM. Uh, did traffic for a while and then went back to reporting and and I've been the morning anchor on the 570 Morning News with Glenn for, I believe it's 12 years. I should have asked Glenn. Glenn can tell me down to the day. He remembers every single date in my life. And he'll tell us exactly when we went to the air. But I think it's 12 years now. Wow. I always yeah. like to listen to you guys in the morning because I have to commute to uh, uh, just outside of Milton every day. And you guys are the most important thing for me because I need to know what the traffic on the 401 is like. So if you guys tell it's say it's bad or it's backed up, I have about two or three back backup roads of going. So you guys, you and Glenn are actually one of the most important parts of uh, my morning. Let me know about the traffic on the 401. Thank you, but I'll give full credit to Asher Roth, our morning traffic reporter for that. He's amazing. Yes, well, thank him for me personally because, because yeah, the 401, I, I'm going to find it. The 401 is just as bad as it's ever have, has been before, and I'm just glad I only have to go into the Milton part, not actually Toronto or whatever, because it's just crazy nowadays. Do you find it's a little bit better, though? Um, not better, but with the pandemic, more people are working from home. Are you noticing any... Um, it feels like it's a bit lighter out there, but then we're still getting a lot of reports of different collisions and backups and that sort of thing. But as a regular commuter, do you think some of your 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 friendly commuters next to you on the 401 are maybe working from home a little bit more? Uh, I know the transport trucks, there's more than them on the on the roads than ever before. But uh, today, just coming home from uh, my uh, my current job, um, I find the traffic is getting heavier again. I For a while there, Lisa, I would tell you, yeah, it's less traffic and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, but being back on day shift, I find the traffic volume is uh, pretty similar. Yeah, it's, it's been interesting trying to get a feel for how many people are still fully working at home. A lot of people are kind of transitioning in a few days a week. Um, I would say we still have a really good large number at our workplace still working from home. And with this amazing technology, we can do it. The anchors are still in the studio. Our talk shows are still in the studio and our music jocks doing their shows are still in studio. But our reporters, when there's nothing breaking, when they can cover something from home, they're doing that. Um, and we've got a lot of our sales team obviously working from home as well. 
Well, hey, it's a good thing. Like, I'm not saying it was a good thing this pandemic happened, but uh, could you imagine if it happened uh, 20, 30 years ago when we didn't have this technology that's available to us? Yeah, and I mean, we're learning something new every day. Uh, I teach by Zoom. Um, some days I feel very successful. Uh, yesterday, it was a complete disaster. There was three of me on the screen talking to them, so I think I scared my students. But I, it's amazing what we've all adjusted to, and Zoom's just become a part of our language. And you know how we're chatting today. Normally, we would be in studio together or meeting up with some recording equipment, and now we're just chatting, you know, in, in completely different parts of the area, and we're just talking and saying hello to everybody else joining us right now. Oh, well, and like I said, I uh, started this. Uh podcast 10 months ago and it's just amazing <laughs> i'm able to do this with all the technology and stuff like that um it's just and then i use a stream yard for my podcast and mm -hmm. it's just really amazing what it can do uh with even uh, somebody's ch starting out it's just amazing with zoom and stream yard and all this technology out here how we can do everything virtually now yeah, yeah, it is. It's just incredible. And I know there'll be another new trick or something else we'll be adding to, you know, our bag of tricks in the next uh, couple of weeks, even the next month, there'll be something new that we're all adjusting to and totally using. Yes. And like I said, uh, I'm just trying to get better at doing this every day. And uh, I, I can't wait to get back with Rogers TV. Oh, hello. What's yeah, we have a few name? cats too. <laughs> How many cats? How many cats? Uh, we have four, all rescues. That's okay. I have we one. We have a really full cool house. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have a cat named Latte uh, <laughs> adopted from the Humane Society here last year. She's always uh, friendly to me because she likes her temptation treats. Yeah. I, you know what? And I think to rescue animals know that uh, life is pretty sweet and I find them even more loving and uh, they just want to be part of, part of the action, clearly. Definitely. She, yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to get to a second question I got, Freya. Uh, when did you decide you wanted to pursue a career in broadcasting media? Okay, so that's um, a trick question or it's not. Uh, my parents will swear when I was six and seven years old, I would sit in front of the bathroom mirror with the hairbrush and talk into it like I was a reporter, um, which I had to be reminded of. When I went into high school back in the olden days, we had grade 13 I don't know if anyone can still remember that. Or I'm fully dating myself. Um, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I, I thought I wanted to get into journalism and I applied for different programs. Some I got into, some I didn't, which was really disappointing. And I did, I don't know if you remember back in the olden days, you would go down to see your, your counselor, your school counselor, and you would do this old time. I think you even took a pencil and filled in different circles about what your interests were and they put it into what was a computer at the time. And it came back with, here's what we think you might be good at. And one was public relations. So I applied for public relations at Humber College. Uh, I had to go down and do a lot of interviews and fight for a spot to get into this program. I got in within a month of being in the program. I just knew that I wanted to be on the other side of it. I didn't want to be pitching things to journalists. I wanted to be the reporter on the other side. And someone I was commuting with to get to the college every day was taking the journalism program and it was blowing my mind what he was doing in the class. So I went down and both program heads let me switch. And a month later, I just started in the three-year journalism program at Humber. And, and uh, how I got to the radio piece of it, because we did uh, print and broadcast. My professors at the time, Nancy Burt, I get full credit for my radio career, told me that I really shouldn't be going the print magazine writing stream in my third year. I should do, I should major in broadcast. Um, and I really wanted to be a magazine writer. I love, I still love magazines to this day and the writing that goes with it. But I took her advice and it's worked out really well. And maybe I can probably say I was one of the kids in that class that I was always told, even, you know, way back in your elementary years to quit talking. So I was a big talker even in class. I was told to be quiet, which seems to be a common thing with a lot of the radio people I work with. Yes. And I'm like that too. I was going to say when I was in my twenties, uh, when I got out of high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then, um, I did go to school for law and security. I kind of chickened out at the time because I had a chance to go to Conestoga college for broadcasting. Yeah. And I just, I just wish I could go back in time 25, 30 years, but, uh, 
Um, I got a taste of broadcasting with uh, the Guelph Nighthawks a couple years ago. They uh, put me on a live camera, and uh, the producer actually said I did well. And they basically encouraged me to go with Rogers TV. And mm -hmm. before COVID, I've been I was doing camera operator uh, for the Guelph Storm games, and uh, I've got a taste of broadcasting, doing live broadcasts. And then um, I decided ten months ago to start Thirty Minutes Live with CDP. And uh, all I'm trying to do, and I I, I kind of now want to try to make a career out of it. I, I'm kind of older in life, but uh, I'm just, uh, like I said, I love talking to people. I, I'm just trying to interview people and uh, people like yourself and some other people have been really great about uh, coming on with me and uh, let me gain experience interviewing people. Well, I fully encourage it. It sounds to me like you're feeding your soul during this pandemic, which is so important. Um, I do teach the, at the radio program, the broadcasting program at Conestoga College. I teach just radio news. Um, but we've got Carlo Benavides teaching there and also Professor Kara Judd. And they, they're they incredible. They've been in our, our, you know, our local media circles. They both worked with us at 570 News and Chime. And uh, I fully encourage you to apply for the program. We have students of all ages and uh, it's incredible. But, you know, what they come up with every day and I'm wowed by them. I'm learning from them especially right now as I try to teach by Zoom. They're telling me, uh, Lisa, turn this off, but then I'm teaching them what I know about radio news. So it's been a win-win and uh, I fully encourage you. You're feeding you know, your heart and your soul and you've got that natural curiosity. That's gonna get you far in this type of business. Well, thank you so much. And I'm just trying to improve every day, every week. And what I've been told by many people, just be yourself and be yeah. consistent. Yeah, I, I would say that's the best advice. It just the more authentically you are yourself, I mean, that's what's going to shine through. And that's what people are going to connect with, not some facade or some big voice that people think we need on the radio or on TV. Mm -hmm. That's that's not, that was like 70s and 80s big voice radio. Yep. I think people know when you're connecting with them. And I always say it to my students, and we say it on the air at 570 as well. When you're smiling, when you're speaking, people know you're smiling. Even though you can't see me on there, you know when I'm smiling, when it's an appropriate story or when we're talking about something that, is, that you know, fits a smile. But you can tell it just naturally comes out over the air. So being authentic, you will always help you win. Yeah. Well, well thank you. And like I said, I learned something from every guest I, I have on here. And I just, I like to learn. I want to keep learning. And uh, like I said, uh, I uh, like to listen and learn. So. You're doing great. Well, thank you. Thank you. And like I said, I love sports, but I've branched out a little bit. I've been trying to get people from other professions to come on here as well. I just think it's, I, I can still do my sports, but I think it's great to talk to other people from other uh, professions and careers as well. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, and I mean, thank goodness we are slowly getting sports back. I mean, I'm so happy when I hear Simon Bennett, who does our sports in the morning, he has way more to talk about these days than, you know, in the early days of the pandemic when everything got shut down and he would joke, because I'll, I'll, I'll give you the scores for a bingo game at this point. Like someone tell me what's going on in the Crokinole world. You know, and by the way, the Crokinole tournament, which I think is the world Crokinole tournament that's held in Tavistock every year, they just canceled it because of COVID. So. Mm -hmm. There actually is a World Crokinole Tournament. So. I did not know that. I did not yeah. know that. Yeah. See, every day I learn something new. I just learned it too. <laughs> so, okay. My next question for you, Lisa. Um, did you have a mentor when you were in college, university, and when you first started out in the field? I totally, totally did. Um, first of all, um, Jim Bard and also Nancy Bird at Humber College were both really incredible to me, um, just encouraged me. And I, I still think of little things that they said to this day. Um, when I did my internship, I was lucky to internship at two really great places. CKO, All News Radio in Toronto is gone. Um, but at the time it was, a, it was a, an amazing all news talk radio station. And it used to broadcast actually out of the Maple Leaf Gardens um, oh. building. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, so I interned there, which was really incredible. And I also interned because I was living in Bramley at the time to a Brampton radio station, CFNY. And I went to high school listening to CFNY. And it was just a real thrill for me to be in that building and see all these really cool um, musicians come into the building like John Lennon and uh, not John Lennon. I'm sorry, his son, Sean Lennon. 
Bill, let's get that right. Just some really cool bands come in that, uh, you know, I was really into at the time when I was going to high school. And uh, Mary Ellen Benninger, um, she was just incredible to me. She did the morning news. I was, I interned where I spent every morning prepping her news. In the olden days, you used to get the news feed on paper and it would just spill onto the floor overnight. You would have to come in and take a metal ruler and literally rip each copy story and pile it up into different categories like your sports and there's your news and and then you would sift through it well now everything we get electronically into our burly news system but in the olden days it would print out and you would have to rip the copy and separate it so i would do things like that and do the police checks and i even got to help fred patterson with the one minute mouth sports mouth which was a big feature at the time so i loved being at cfny which was just great but she was also my first um really great reference that helped me get in the door at 570 chime uh gary doyle know, knew her and she knew but there was a posting in kitchener so while i was going down the 401 to work at chatham for my very first job i desperately wanted to come back to the toronto area and she was an amazing reference and I got in at uh, 570 Chime, which is now 96.7 Chime and 570 News because they did a format flip way back in the day. Yeah. Well, well one thing uh, the guys, the guys like Mike Farwell and Mike yeah. Stubbs have been telling me too, uh, it helps to have contacts, connections. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in this industry as well, so uh, they said just to work on um, the meeting people and uh, making contacts as well because you never know uh, what that person he or she uh, can help you with in the future. Uh, absolutely and I say that to my students all the time I said when you look at our class whether it's a small or bigger class that year um, look around the room and be teammates because radio is such a small industry if, if you don't know that person, someone knows of you and they're going to say something amazing about you or something terrible about you in two seconds. We're such a fall, a small radio family in Canada that, uh, you know, very close degrees of separation. Someone will hopefully have something amazing to say about you when you're trying to get in at that station. So, you know, embrace and support your teammates, whether it's in your class at radio station there or your newsroom here where people are going to launch next. We all are connected or will cross paths a number of times during our years in this in this wonderful business called radio. Yes, and um, like I said, I, I like TV too. Don't get me wrong, but uh, my goal is I would like to get into radio because I love to talk and I listen to a lot of radio still. Like I know everything's old TV and now and, and, and live streaming and stuff like that, but I still love listening to radio. And you know what? We look way cuter on the radio, especially at 4 a.m. <laughs> like this is radio hair. TV hair looks a lot different. So you don't want to see my TV hair today. You got my radio hair on a Friday. <laughs> yeah, but you have more hair than I do. My hair is awful right now. I wear it's hats a lot. A lot. Of hair. It's pandemic hair is what I got, yeah. Chris. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't have much hair left other than gray hair, and uh, that's why I wear the ball caps. Yeah. So, <laughs> but. Anyways, uh, another question I wanted to ask you, Lisa. Uh, what was, biggest adjustment from doing uh, from TV to radio, or I guess radio to television? Um, the so differences. I, I, yeah, so I did do radio and TV my last year at college, and then I fully went the TV stream. But because I work for Rogers, I've done a lot of stuff and helped fill in on Rogers TV over the years. When we've done, uh, I, you know, when we used to have that mid-morning talk show, I used to sub in for Susan Cookshear, who's a dear radio sister and TV sister. Um, so I've had some TV, but I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even try to say oh, I've had a TV career at all. I'm just a radio person filling in from time to time. And again, I love that I look way cuter on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you definitely. <laughs> um, what I've been like is so far what I've been told is radio, you have a little more, a little bit more freedom than television. Television, you're more on a strict, stricter schedule. And you, and it's basically the producer's got a, okay, you got one minute here or 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Radio, you have a, 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 what I've been told is a little bit more freedom. Well, I think with radio, it would depend what kind of show you're doing. So if you're doing a music show, we all have clocks that we have to follow and to time out for different commercials and breaks and that sort of thing. And with the news business too, we have to time out to hit the, you know, traffic and weather together on the ones. We have to time out for the bottom of the hour to start the next half hour news wheel. So we're always watching the clock. So we have rigidity that way. 
uh, but we don't have a producer talking in our ear. Glenn and I are producing our show and conversing in between, you know, voicers playing and and spots playing. So we do have a lot of freedom when we get in in the morning and probably because we've been doing it for a long time. Um, TV, there's a lot more players to get that program on the air and there's people talking in your ear the whole time where I'm just talking to my newsroom and my reporter out on the field. So to me, it feels, it's more, radio's more intimate. And we're also, you know, just like we are now, we're live, we can be more immediate. We can break in with anything. So to me, radio's really exciting and morning radio, when we wake up in the morning, I'm the first to tell you the most amazing new information that no one else has told you yet. So that's really exciting. It's you never know what's going to be, you know, in your newscast that morning and what's breaking that morning and what's developing. And you get to share that with your community. So it's pretty exciting. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, are you okay for time? I just got a few more questions. And I that's am. Good. That's, yep. I'm still okay. doing okay. And I'm glad my dog's not barking. So I'm very happy. I have one dog snoring at my feet. So we're good. You just make sure you give them treats after spoil. Well, good, no, good, I will. good. Yeah, I like animals more. I like animals more than people some days. I've always had pets, so I love dogs and cats. Yeah, so. we do too. Teenagers okay. aren't bad either. I'll give you that. Yeah, I don't have kids myself, but I have niece and uh, uh, two nieces and a nephew. So, okay. Uh, next question I was going to ask you is, uh, what's it like been working for Five Seventy News for the past thirty years? Um, it's been fun. It's still, it's still really fun. Um, yeah, there's definitely some scary days, some serious days. Um, I've never been in all of my career where we've been in this last year, we've been deemed essential workers. We are still going into the studio where a lot of people are working from home now. Glenn and I haven't had that option. We're recording live every morning in studio and uh, we're talking about some really serious, scary stuff but we've been able to share it with the community, try to figure it out and help help our listeners break down that information to make some really important decisions about how they're going to go about their day or are they going to go out? Are they going to send their children to school today or can they? What's closed down today? Where is there an outbreak? How are their senior parents doing or are their senior parents showing up at one of our first mass vaccination clinics? So it's been really exciting to see not only has technology evolved, um, our newsroom size. We've had different own owners over the year. We had a gorgeous new setup on the boardwalk with new studios after being in downtown Kitchener for, for years. Um, you know, it's always something exciting and new. And I would say that's what's still keeping me in radio. And I can still say it's fun. Even after the year that we've had, there's still moments where, you know, we're tight radio family. We're still having, I don't want to say a good time during the pandemic, but we've been able to be there to lean on each other and pick each other up when it's been a little scarier day or a darker day. But there's still there's still some good news and some things to celebrate. And I feel radio allows you to do that. And my family at the radio station is part of that, too. So it's been it's been a nice evolution and it still evolves and changes like every every month or something different going on with my job at the radio station or something new, some new element that we're doing on the air. Okay. Uh, one question I wanted to ask you quickly is, uh, what time is your normal day start at? What time do you normally wake up at and then you got to be at the station by? Okay. So I really do get up at 2.30 in the morning. Um, that's probably why I'm doing this right now with my eyes, trying to hold them really open for you. So my alarms go off at 2.30. Uh, I'm on the road by about 3. I have a bit of a commute in the morning. And uh, I get into the station around four-ish. We're on the air at five. Our show goes from five to nine. Glenn and I are on the entire time. Uh, and then from nine to 11, Glenn's still doing some updates. I'm generating tape for our afternoon uh, reporters and anchors. I'm conducting some interviews. We're planning about where we're gonna go with coverage. Um, and I'm taping promos and, and that sort of thing. So you, you were usually out of there by about 11 o'clock. Um, by the time I get home, lunchtime, and I'll grab a quick nap um, just to kind of, you know, help me be a real life person when my family shows up for dinner and I'm still, I want to still want to be awake when they're around. And I probably get to bed about 9, 930, which is not the best. I should go to bed a lot earlier. Um, but yeah, that's my day in a nutshell. And then add in, I teach once a week uh, on Wednesdays. I teach in the afternoons to a great radio crew at Conestoga this year. I'm teaching. Um, first years this semester and I just had second years 
the last semester. So, so yeah, I'm pretty busy. I have to mark some more assignments when I get off the air right now. So <laughs> then I'm going to have a nap and then I'm going to have a really great weekend. Yeah. Okay. Well, I won't keep you too much longer. Just, okay. just a couple more questions. I like to ask questions and that, but uh, I always ask my guests to make sure they're okay for time because yeah. technically my show is 30 minutes, but sometimes they go over 30 minutes. No problem. I'm doing so, just fine. Yeah. Cause I notice when you're doing something that you enjoy, time just goes so quick. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. You know, we're on the air for four full hours nonstop. Um, it, it doesn't, it's hard to believe that the four hours are gone and you're like, that's it. We're, we're the show's already done. That's a good thing. You know, now you we're looking want, ahead. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's fun. You don't want, yeah. When you it start, if it starts feeling like it's dragging or it's like, Oh my God, Oh my God, like how long it is, then that's never a good thing too. So I guess one of the things I was going to say, it's important to build a rapport with who you're working with on the station, like on your show or, or your new station. Yeah. Um, so exactly. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Some days feel like groundhog days in this last year. I think we can all feel like, didn't we just do this? Like, didn't we just say, here's the latest COVID numbers. So some days do feel like groundhog day. Um, but when you talk about uh, hanging out with a work family, Glenn Pelche and I have been together forever as uh, you know, work buddies he kind of feels like the brother I never wanted. And I'm, I drive him nuts like his crazy sister you know, or I jokingly call him my work husband, but we've, we've, you know, uh, back in the olden days when he was on 570 Chime, he did an afternoon show. He was a jock. Uh, I used to do traffic and some news updates on his show. And then now we're together. We've been together for 12, almost 12 years. I think he's going to correct me on that. I know he is, um, you know, be, doing the morning news together. So, you know, we, we trust each other. We know what each other's going to do. We can have one of, one of us can have our heads down working on some coffee. I know just by the sound of his voice or that word that he says, when I can just automatically jump in and put my mic on, we just, we're just in sync, which is a really nice thing to be able to say. Um, we've been really tight family friends outside of work as well. Our kids are the same age and it's been neat to compare how they've been growing up together and what our kids are doing at the same time. So, you know, it's, it's been really nice to have him in my corner and I hope he thinks that it's good to have me in his corner some days too, but I'm thankful to have him hanging out with me in a tiny room during a pandemic. How many people can say that, right? That's true. That's true. <laughs> and we are in a true. tiny room together. Yeah. That, that small, eh? Not that, that big. Wow. Okay. Uh, I guess you answered this question coming up. Um, I guess besides Glenn, do you have another favorite radio personality you've worked with over the years in your career? Um, well, Mary Ellen Benninger is my end all be all. And, uh, just seeing her in action and her being a great mentor to me has just been, she's been, she's incredible. Um, we have so many great radio sisters and brothers um, at our green brand stations at 680 News. There's such a great crew there that we've been working with and our crew in-house is amazing. Um, I have to say one of my favorite radio personalities is Tara Connors, my best friend on Chime 96.7. So it's been wonderful that we've been able to work together over the years. Uh, and now I'm just down the hall from her. And even though we're in a pandemic, I don't quite get to see her that much anymore because we go into our own little rooms with uh, COVID protocols. But uh, I would say she's one of my favorite too. So I have to give her some love. But we've got some really great radio sisters in, in this local broadcast industry at other radio stations as well that I'm really thankful that we interact with and we support each other. Yeah. I was going to say it really makes the job easier working with good people. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we have a really great group of people working for a lot of different companies on the air in the Kitchener-Waterloo region. It's a really great group. Well, and like I said, I've only started doing interviews maybe the last three months and I'm now getting two guests on a week and everybody I've interviewed has been really great. And I've actually made some friendships out of it and contacts and everybody's been like so helpful and it. It makes you feel good because like I said, I, I'm kind of in my late forties, but everybody's been so supportive and encouraging of what I'm trying to do. No, it's great. And you know, the fact that you picked up on that and I think you're feeling the, the uh, how authentic they are as well, right? And they're feeding that and that's supporting you and you're being able to, again, what, what a nice gift during a pandemic to have this release and learn something new, like you're, you're continually growing and I can tell that it's sparking something in your heart as well. I probably should have done this years ago, but you know what? It's never too late. It's never too late. No, 
Okay, I just get two more questions okay. for you, Lisa. Um, this one I wanted to ask you. What is the hardest aspect, if any, of the industry? Um, I would say at the end of the day, we're still a business, which means that business has to make money, right? And we need to sell commercials, and that's how I get paid. The company needs to be selling spots and advertising, and then that's how we pay our bills at the radio station and how we get how I get my paycheck. So during a pandemic, we too are impacted because a lot of people that advertise with us either aren't in business anymore or they are, but they're having to adjust the way that they do business during a pandemic. So we've seen like the restaurant industry evolve and the bar, the, you know, the entertainment um, industry as well. All of that is, is struggling during the pandemic and they're finding new ways to do things. And, and uh, then those people would normally be advertising with us. So we want to be supporting them. And we want you to buy local and support local. And we continue to push that message. But as local radio stations and local news, we want to still make sure people are consuming us and using us as well. Um, and we've been hard hit in our industry. Rogers, not so much, which I'm extremely thankful for. But there's been a lot of cuts at Bell recently. And with, um, you know, with radio and TV right across Canada. And, uh, you know, it's just a reminder that we, we, you know, we're thankful for being on the air and we're thankful that we're still able to deliver local, like local at the end of the day is, you know, how you're going to make your decisions for the day. Is there a weather warning? You know, what am I going to put my kids in to get to school? Is a 401 shutdown, as you pointed out, you know, can I get to work today or do I have to plan an alternate to what are police doing at the end of my street? Oh, that, that I found out. I just listened to 570 News and they've answered those questions for me, or I know that something's going on and they're going to, get more information for me? Or what did the prime minister just say about COVID vaccines? So now it's not just 80 year olds, but 70 year olds, maybe even 60 year olds are getting moved up on that timeline. That's good news for, you know, my mom or my grandmother and my family that I can get them that life-saving inoculation. So that would be the hard part. You know, we, we need to, to bring in advertising to support us being on the air and we want to keep us on the air and we're thrilled to be here to be uh, you know a local community member as well uh one thing also i was told um and i've always been like this even before i've decided i want to switch careers is always remain humble that um yeah. just remain humble and uh because the industry can humble you pretty quick to, with all the changes nowadays yeah yeah exactly and you know what don't start buying your your resume don't believe your bio right yeah it's nice to say i did all these things in the industry and blah 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 but at the end of the day you know just be a nice person <laughs> you know and and you know um show that you're credible right like live up to it yeah yeah just be be you really at the end of the day and that's what's going to keep you bobbing along above the water and and, you know, hopefully soaring out of the water. Definitely. And, and when I listen to stations, I listen to pe person that radio personalities that I like to listen to. And they they don't talk down to their listener or their viewers. Yeah. 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 Just um, just be kind, I think, is the, the big takeaway. And you know what? Um, build, build your contacts in the community. Build your contacts in the industry. You know, it's nice to be able to phone people up and know that they'll take your phone call and do an interview with you and they trust you that you're going to deliver that information on the air in the in in the appropriate way. That I've means been, a lot to me. Yes. And I, I've I actually interviewed a couple of NFL play by play announcers and now they want to come back on my show again in the future. And it's like really wow. That's and it's cool. like they yeah, so, built an amazing repertoire and contact yeah. and trust, you know, you're trustworthy. Well, and that's nice to hear. It's really, it's nice to hear positive feedback and it's just, but definitely Lisa, I definitely will not let anything go to my head. I just have to keep grinding away and take it one day at a time. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Last question. I promise. Okay. Last question. <laughs> this is the one I wanted to save for last, but any advice Lisa you could give to anyone, not just me, but anyone that's yep. looking to get into the broadcasting industry. I still think it's an extremely exciting way to go. Um, there's a lot of changes in technology. When you look at, uh, 
you know, now our reporters, not only are they going out reporting, but they're also tweeting and doing social media from the scene. They're getting video and pictures. And then we're coming back and writing a story for the web. So it's not just turning on our mics and talking anymore. But then when you look at what the newspapers are doing, the record, they're producing little podcasts. They're producing little mini newscasts to go on the air. They're doing social media. They're showing video as well. I mean, we're all kind of getting closer to doing a lot of the same services, but we all have our specialty, which makes us shine. But the more that you can pick up some extra tricks along the way, um, you know, we're, more, we're really all more multimedia now. And I think that will help you. And it also help you, you know, from Rogers TV, having those TV skills on top of radio and just being naturally curious, like what you're doing right now, um, you're feeding, feeding a need in you that you want to get better and you want to meet, you meet people. And you just have naturally curious questions. Um, yeah. It's like, you know, when you go to a party or remember those olden days when we could go to parties or have dinner with people and you mm -hmm. meet somebody and you just start peppering them with questions. You do this. Oh, like, what about this? Like, you just realize that you're just, you're interested. Being interested is half the battle and keeping interested and asking those questions that, you know, I'm asking a question on behalf of my listener. What would they want to know at the end of the day? Okay. Well, yeah. like you said, thank you so much, Lisa. And uh, I really appreciate your time and, and uh, coming on today and uh, for some of your advice as well. Well, thank you. It was really nice to officially meet you. I feel like we've known each other on social media for a while. Well, yeah. <laughs> but so it's nice to kind of fully talk to you, talk to you and, and kind of see each other too. Like yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Cause like I said, it's been hard the last year where I haven't been able to see some family or friends because of the COVID. So I'm, I'm very thankful for the technology and stuff like that. I, like I said, Lisa, even 10 years ago, I didn't even know what Wi-Fi was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so. it. I mean, things have changed, right? Like when I first started in the news and believe it or not, they had, electric typewriters with carbon paper to do multiple copies and they still had a razor and a reel to reel to cut and splice tape and cart machines that looked like those old eight tracks from the 70s mm -hmm. now then we went to cassettes like which was a really big deal and you know and now like this is what we use our reporter goes out with their phone that's it yep yep they're doing their interviews with uh, an app and a 15 dollars editing app and they can go live it's it's incredible. That's this is all you need. This is it. This Pretty is well, this yeah. Technology is it's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> even with my phone, I can do a I can do a a, a, a voice interview just with that too. It does everything. You're yeah. right. No, you don't have to lug a big bag of equipment around anymore. No. So it's just amazing. But uh, Lisa, I'm going to let you go because I know you want to maybe get a nap and get some stuff in. <laughs> but I was going to say maybe you'll be able to come back again in the future and and my talk some more about. Guess. Talk some more yeah, about maybe Connors. I can I can impress you with some kind of sports knowledge. No, it's know. okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> maybe just uh, come back and talk about your uh, your career at Conestoga College as a professor and and how things have changed over the years with uh, teaching students nowadays. Deal, total deal. Deal. You should look okay. into the program. Okay, we'll do. We'll do. And I'm just waiting to get back with uh, uh, Rogers TV. I don't know if you know who Neil White is, but I'll tell you this. He's a great producer with Rogers TV, and I have so much respect for uh, uh, producers because that job is like being a quarterback of a football team. It is, it's not easy to do. You have to be, be a jack of all tools or trades, I guess, for that job. Yeah. Yeah, they're unsung heroes. You don't you don't um, get to see them enough or hear from them enough. I love during our talk shows that you can hear Mike talking to producer Polly because they do so many important things behind the scenes that make us look better. But they're they're the stars for sure. Definitely. OK, well, Lisa, I'm going to let you go. But thank you so much for coming on 30 Minutes Live with CDP. And uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. And thanks for putting up with my dog and my cat. <laughs> I love dogs and cats. Anytime you can bring them on next time as a guest. Okay. Take care and happy weekend. You too. Thanks, Lisa. Bye. Bye. -bye. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed my uh, interview with uh, Lisa Drew from uh, 570 News in Kitchener. Thank you so much, Lisa, uh, for coming on. I really appreciated that. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show today. And uh, I do have another guest coming on tonight. I'm doing one more show show tonight, uh, Friday night at 7.30. I'm going to have my uh, friend Artie Cleary 
Artie Clear, sorry, uh, from the Artie Clear radio show on WIFI. 1460 AM in uh, Burlington, New Jersey. He's going to come on tonight and he's going to talk to me about uh, Philly sports and his career on the radio station out there as well. So uh, give me one second, guys. I'll just bring his picture up here. Yeah. So this is who will be on tonight. Uh, Mr. Artie clear. So I've been social media friends with him for uh, um, probably 10 years now. And uh, he's a, uh, had a good career in radio and he's interviewed guys like uh, Jesse Barfield and all that up there as well. So uh, like I said, uh, hopefully you guys can tune in seven 30 tonight uh, with my interview with Artie clear. So guys, I'm going to call it a show. Uh, just give me one second, guys. Give me one second. I'm just, I'm still learning all this technology stuff. So uh, see you guys can follow me on social media and all that and stuff like that. And like I said, um, and like I said, uh, let's see. Oh yeah. And uh, StreamYard is the official live stream provider of 30 minutes live with CDP. And uh, yeah, guys, I uh, just want to say thank you for watching the show. And uh, like I said, We'll see you guys all tonight at 7.30 um, on 30 Minutes Live with CDP. Take care, guys. Talk to you in about four and a half hours. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye.